Hello and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian and I'm here to bring you a guide on how to find all the constellations for the northern circumpolar region of the sky, visible from Bay City, Michigan. Let's bring our night sky to around 11pm on May 15th, 2020. This is when astronomical twilight will end and the sky will be very dark. This view we're using represents the entire night sky. The circle at the edge is the horizon in all directions all around you, and the center of the circle is the zenith, the point in the sky directly above your head. When we look for the northern constellations, we start with the Big Dipper. There's no real trick to finding the Big Dipper, you just have to memorize it. You have to start somewhere. The Big Dipper is made of seven bright stars, and together they kind of look like a spoon with a bent handle. All of the stars of the Big Dipper are quite bright and can be seen even in areas with significant light pollution. The Big Dipper is just a small part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, or the Great Bear. The Big Dipper forms the bear's long tail and hindquarters. The body extends out from the end of the cup to a pointy face, and three legs extend below the body. There are a few important stars in Ursa Major that we're going to make note of. If you look closely at the middle star in the handle of the Big Dipper, Sharp-eyed observers may notice the star is actually two close-together stars. The brighter star is named Mizar, and the dimmer star is named Alcor. I usually remember that Mizar is the major star, and Alcor is the additional star. Mizar and Alcor are a visual double star, meaning they're two stars that appear very close together in the sky. It's unclear right now if they are gravitationally bound to each other, which would make them a binary. But we do know through more advanced techniques that each Mizar and Alcor have unseen companion stars. Mizar has three more stars orbiting it, and Alcor has one. Many stars you see in the night sky are not solitary stars. They're actually members of binary, trinary, or even sextuple star systems. We're going to use the technique called star hopping to find the other constellations. We're going to use convenient alignments of the stars to draw lines to the other constellations in this region of the sky. The last two stars in the cup of the Big Dipper are named Merak and Dubi. We're going to draw a line from Merak in the bottom of the cup through Dubi in the top of the cup and extend that line out by about a full length of the Big Dipper until we reach the first relatively bright star. This star is named Polaris. It's not very bright, but it's very important because it sits almost directly above the North Pole of Earth. You might have heard it called the North Star. Polaris is part of a constellation called Ursa Minor, or the Little Bear. Frequently, this is called the Little Dipper, because it looks a lot like the Big Dipper, except it's smaller and dimmer. Ursa Minor and the Little Dipper are identical pictures in the night sky. Just like the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper is made of seven stars, and Polaris is at the end of the handle. Three stars make up the handle, and four in the cup. The two dippers kind of look like they're pouring into each other. There are a few important things to note about Polaris. Because it sits almost directly above the North Pole, if you drop a line from Polaris to the horizon, you know which direction is true geographic north for your position. As we make time speed up, we can also see the stars in the sky appear to move in circles around Polaris. This is of course due to Earth's rotation, but the result is the apparent counterclockwise motion of the stars in the sky. We can also see a group of stars that never go below the horizon. These are the circumpolar stars, and this region is a circle whose radius is equal to the distance between Polaris and the horizon. It will be unique for your particular latitude on Earth. Larger the further north you go, and smaller the further south. There are three more important constellations in this region of the sky that never sets. The next one is Draco the Dragon. I find Draco by looking at the stars in the Little Dipper. Look at the back two stars in the cup. These stars can be hard to see in areas with significant light pollution, but if you develop a good sense of where those stars are, you can imagine a line from the top star in that cup down through the bottom star and extend it out until you hit this trapezoid shape of stars. This is the head of Draco the Dragon. Draco is a more serpentine dragon, more similar to Chinese depictions of dragons than to dinosaur-like western depictions. The dragon's body makes a backwards S shape, and the tail ends up in between the two dippers, with the end of the tail just about even with the cup of the Big Dipper.
Cassiopeia is pretty easy to find, and usually can be picked directly out of the sky because of its distinctive W shape. But if you're just getting started, you can draw a line from Merak and Duby in the Big Dipper, and extend that line through Polaris. That line will lead you directly to the brightest star in Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is supposed to be the queen of ancient Ethiopia, which is just so obvious from its shape. Cassiopeia is this W, M, E, or 3 shape. Cassiopeia is asymmetrical. One side is kind of flat, and one side is kind of sharp. We're going to use the sharp side to find Cassiopeia's king, Cepheus. Take the last two stars in the sharp side of the W of Cassiopeia, and imagine a line from the bottom star through the top. That line will extend out to this relatively bright star in Cepheus. Cepheus looks like a child's drawing of a house, and this star sits in the lower right-hand corner. Four stars make the box, and a triangle makes the roof on top. These are the circumpolar constellations seen from Bay City, Michigan. There is one more constellation in this area of the sky, Camelopardalis, but it is very faint, very difficult to see, and fairly modern, having only been created in the 1600s. If you have a clear night, go out and try to walk through these five circumpolar constellations. The best thing about them is that you can see them every night of the year and any time of night. They're always up. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies.